ask you a lifetime. They must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is the one that has that master key. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to welcome everybody to this wonderful service today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Destiny Church, Washington, D.C. service today is our communion service. I want to let you know we are here as we prepare for uh, our uh, journey of 21 days. We are partaking of communion for strength, for health, and for long life. Partaking of the divinity that is packaged inside the blood and the flesh of Jesus Christ. So get ready wherever you are watching us from. I want to welcome all our members uh, across the globe. I am Pastor Adeboto Mewo, the founding pastor of Destiny Church worldwide uh, in London and DC. And I'm blessed, privileged, highly favored by God to have my wife by my side. Uh, she's the resident pastor of London Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Adeboto Mewo. She will tell you her name because I want her to mention that name, amen. So uh, please tell us your name, our resident pastor. My name is Elezera <laughs> Shimomio. Amen, that's, that's, her name is called Elezera. Elezera mean God is with me. You can know when I say I'm blessed, God is with me, is, that is one of my blessings. So when she's with me like this, I am very comfortable. Sometimes I can even be sleeping, say, I know God is with me. <laughs> I am confident because I know that uh, this is the ark of God by my side here. This is, precious, this is my own precious cargo. <laughs> oh, God. This is my own precious cargo. So when she's here, uh, so when you see me do like uh, it's because I have precious cargo in the house. So uh, so we thank God for all of you that are joining us uh, today. It's going to be a great time today. We are talking about how to capture the year at its foundation. To capture the year with right practices for uh, the year. The year has been declared. And I wanted to know that this year is a very wonderful year that the Lord has made in respective of the virus, in respect of the new strain, I wanted to know that God is made this year, not the devil. No matter the virus, 
no matter the challenges that this year has come with. I want to let you know that God is bigger than those challenges. Mm -hmm. We serve a God that knows things before they happen. And that's one of the things I want to let you know. There is nothing that is going right now that God is not aware of it. Mm -hmm. God is aware of what is going on. COVID-19 and COVID-20 and COVID-1 million, God is aware of it. And that is why I want you to know uh, that no matter how you enter this year, you can always lay the foundation that will move God to manifest his power in the year. And that is why we want to start by praying uh, to, for these brokers. Not only that, I want you to also share this broker with somebody because I know that somebody is here that needs to hear the message on, on, on how to capture this year at its foundation, how to lay foundation for this year with right practices. Mm -hmm. That is what I want to talk about. Practices that will help you to lay solid foundation for the year. So mommy will pray for us and we kick start what the Lord has said concerning this matter for us. Yeah. God, Let's you. pray. Father, we want to thank you. Amen. We are here in your presence. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless us with your word. Yes, Lord. Send your word to us. Yes, Lord. A word in a season. Yes, Lord. Lord, we believe your word. Shut to up. heal, to deliver, to set free. Today. Yes. Holy Spirit, inspire us. Mm. Holy Spirit, grant us access. Mm. Insight into the word of God. Mm. Bless everyone hearing today. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, we are going to I'll uh, be reading uh, from Matthew chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3. Uh, and let's see what the Bible says, what Jesus said there concerning three things you must do if you want to capture this year at its foundation. The things you must do to capture the year at its foundation. There are things we do on the physical realm that bring about spiritual release, that brings about release in the spiritual realm. And those are the things we want to talk about uh, in this uh, program. Things you do in the natural realm that brings about release in the spiritual realm. And those are the things we are uh, we'll be talking about from our scriptures. So please read that for us. Matthew 6, verse 1 to 5. Okay, verse 1 to 5. He said, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 2, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the street, that they may have glory from men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. Verse three, but when you do a charitable de deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Yes, these are things that when you do in the secret, there are things that when you do them in the secret, if God can see those things, those physical obedience in the in the in the in the in the physical realm that brings about spiritual impact in the realm of the spirit. Mm. And these are the things I want us to, to know as we are on right now. It's just like um, a, a situation that happened in uh, 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 an Exodus chapter 17, verse one, 17, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When Moses, Aaron and all, they lifted up the hand of Moses. And we saw in that place, Exodus chapter 17, verse 11. I want to just see an example of this. Exodus chapter 17, 11. Seventeen verse eleven. Yes. It says there. Seventeen verse eleven. Yes. It says, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that mm -hmm. Israel prevailed, 
And when he laid down his hand, Am Amalek prevailed. Now you can see, uh, you can see something here. When Moses' hand was lifted by Aaron and all, the children of Israel prevailed. And when his hand came down, they were defeated. So you could see here, from what I see here, this means that it came to pass as Moses' hand was lifted in the physical posture in obedience to what God have said, he was winning the battle in the unseen world because of the physical obedience. So this teaches a principle that physical obedience brings about spiritual release. Mm -hmm. It means God was saying, Moses, what you do with your physical body determine whether you win the battle that is going on in the realm of sin. Mm -hmm. God is saying, Physical obedience brings spiritual release. Mm -hmm. This is our year of release. This story is important because what we do physically determine what happens spiritually. So what we do here with our physical body makes a difference in the unseen world. Angels are released to help Israel to win the battle when the hand of Moses was raised in the physical realm, and when the sun came down, they lose the battle. Angels are sent to, to minister to us. When God tells you to do something physical, don't question it because that physical obedience will bring about spiritual release all the time. If raising the hands brings spiritual release under the Old Testament, now, what do you now think your fasting, your prayer, your giving will do under the new covenant? Jesus outlined when we carry out these three physical actions, our fasting, our prayer, and our givings. The Lord said those three physical, those three actions will bring about three dimension three-dimensional release and reward in the year. That is, it will have effect on the unseen world. That is what the book of Matthew 6, 1 to 18 is saying. Jesus said, and uh, English standard version say, that we are not to practice, not to do your righteous practice before men. So your, your fasting, your prayer, and your givings, they are righteous practice that if you do, they are capable of laying the foundation for the year. They are three physical action that brings about three spiritual release. So don't underestimate that's why Jesus said, when you pray. He didn't say, if you pray. He said, when you give. He didn't say, if you give. He said, your father that see it in the secret. So there are things God see in the secret that he rewards in the open. And there are the three things that when you do, they are going to bring about uh, 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 the, 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 the foundation laying of this year. So there's a connection between our physical activity here and spiritual power that is released there. There's a connection between our spiritual, our physical action here and spiritual power released there. Physical obedience open the open brings about release of helps release or protection, favor, healing and miracle. Now, I want to let you know that as we do what God has said we should do, as we fast, as we pray and give, you release power. You release the force of heaven into action to work on your behalf. There, are, there has been a saying that higher levels brings higher devils. 
In other words, new level come with new devils. I, 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 I got that understand to let you know, this year literally is talking about that. New year came with lockdown, virus. We have never had it like that before. We came into the new year, there has never been a year like January 2021. You know why I say so? We cross into the new year, mostly many churches, people have churches, they gather, they rejoice, people go about their business. But see this year, we, we, we enter into it. They didn't allow people to gather in many churches because of the regulation of the government to be able to slow down COVID-19. Many people could not gather physically. Many people are not going about their business like the way we came into last year. So it means a year with a difference. Many people are dying now. Over 1.5 million have already died. They are still dying. That led that there are, even as we came into a new year, they now spoke about a new variant of virus that we didn't have last year. So you can see new year came with another satanic operation to kill people. That's why we need to collect a new anointing from God to, 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 to withstand that satanic assault on humanity. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that except you, you follow what Jesus said. Say, so when you pray, it is safe you pray. When you fast, it is safe you fast. Even when you give. So that is why we are talking about these are the three things you do that if you do them in this year, you are going to see the hand of God in a very mighty way in your life. And when we do this fasting and prayer, we saw an example of somebody that did that. That was Daniel chapter 2, 10, uh, from verse 2 to 12. You see there, Daniel fasted 21 day in the first month. In the first month like this was when he began to pray. He saw in the book, in Daniel chapter 9, 1 to 2, he understood from books that the days of the captivity of God's children is 70 years. It is going beyond what God said. In other words, this is what God said, but we can't see it. This is what God said is not becoming a reality. And it's not because God is lying. It's because there's a resistance. Mm -hmm. Many of us, there are things God has said about you, that I think God has ordained about you, but because there's so much resistance, it's almost as if God is a liar. It's almost as if God did not speak. But because I think powers are resisting what God asks for you to make God look like a liar. But when you fast and pray, your fasting and prayer will dismantle those satanic resistance in Jesus' mighty name. I see you coming out and breaking satanic resistance to your breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll be telling you what happened when you begin to fast and pray what is the things that you are going to see. And we saw that fasting and prayer is the platform for encounter with God. We saw in Daniel chapter 10 from verse two to 5, that Daniel, when he was fasting, an angel appeared to him to tell him what is going on. So when you are fasting and prayer, you are positioning yourself for encounters. Daniel said, I heard and I saw the angel, but others did not see it. They didn't see the angel, only him saw it. Only him had the voice. So it's only you that is fasting and prayer that God will visit. Mm -hmm. So let, let me wonder, your, your fasting and prayer is positioning you for encounter with God. So when you are fasting and praying, you are, you are, you are opening up yourself for an encounter with the almighty God. You are, as you are, as, as you are, uh, as you are fasting and praying, uh, you, are, you are trying to do what I call a private discipline for a public reward. So fasting is you are you are you are fasting your body to fatten your spirit. Fasting means a secret or a private discipline that brings a private discipline in the secret that brings about a public reward. Is it thy father that see in the secret? This year, this 21 days, God will not only hear prayer from you, God will see prayer. Mm -hmm. Thy God that see in the secret. God will see your prayer. Mm -hmm. God will see your fasting. Mm -hmm. And he will reward it mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking about what are the things you experience when you fast and pray. 
what are the things you are doing? We'll talk about your few points at the, of the things you are doing when you are fasting and praying. Uh, 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 number, we'll just talk about, about five points uh, regarding the things that you are doing when you are fasting. What are you, what does it look like? What does it, why do we fast and pray? How does it reflect? What does it bring? How is it seen in the sight of God? So, we would use this to express our helplessness in prayer because, like what you mentioned at the beginning, there are many challenges that are showing up that we have not kind of faced it last year that are showing up. So, we are helpless about the challenges coming up, but God is our helper. He said, I will lift up my help, my eyes to the hill from where I commit my help. So our help for this kind of peculiar challenges can only come from God. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no mysterious situation that God is not aware how to tackle it. Mm -hmm. And he is the only answer. And we use that scripture in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16, mm -hmm. which we are going to establish it as the foundation to this point of expressing our helplessness. Anytime we fast and pray, we are simply telling God that there are some situations beyond human ability to handle. And that's the reason why, Lord, we are here to express our helplessness. Mm -hmm. And we humble ourselves before you in fasting mm -hmm. and prayer mm -hmm. to seek your way, to seek your help, mm -hmm. to seek direction, to seek your mercy, mm -hmm. to see us through so that the problem of life will not wipe us away. Mm -hmm. The problem of life will not waste our life, mm -hmm. you know, because they are beyond what human ability can handle. Anything human ability cannot handle, it requires divine ability mm -hmm. to step in. And it says there in uh, Hebrew 6, verse, Hebrew 4, verse 16, verse 16, 4, verse 16, he said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We are really in time of need. A time like this is a time of need. You, the future is uncertain. You are not sure what is coming next. Everybody's saying we don't know what, but we keep going as we review the situation as we go back. But we are coming before the God that made the heavens and the earth mm. to seek for help. He mm. said, come that you may find grace to help in time of need. Mm. So when we come in during fasting and prayer, we have coming to seek for grace to help in time of need. There is grace for everything before God. There is grace to make it true. There is grace for health. There is grace for finance. There is grace to know him better this year. There is grace for revelation. There is grace for favor, to be able to go through each of the steps you take. God position people to help you. God position destiny help us on your way. There is grace to be able to figure out your way effectively this year without delay. You know, ideas flow through, you know, understanding right people, to meet right people, to be in the right place, to be able to execute those plans that God has put in your heart that you cannot do it otherwise, but it needs the grace of God. It needs the grace of God. That kind of grace that came on Noah to be able to build that ark that God has put in his heart to build. You know, those grace, we need it to be able to execute that career uh, plan of God for us mm -hmm. in the area of our marital destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, whatsoever the need is, there is available grace. Mm -hmm. He said, come that we may find grace to help in time of need. Mm -hmm. So our fasting should be able to uh, uh, help us to assess grace, grace for every kind of need. You know, somebody may not need, you know, miracles, spiritual whatsoever, but he need grace to be able to tackle the business, you know, the challenges that go with the business you are doing. There is grace for it. Not everybody struggles to execute their plan, you know, but when God releases those grace, you go through those situations as if there is no problem on your way. And that's the reason why we are coming before the Lord in time of fasting and prayer, not to just mark time, not to waste our time, but to tell God how helpless we are for the challenges that are laid ahead that we don't have solution for. But God, we know you have run through 2021 from January to December, and you have come back waiting for us in January to escort us through each of the month, each of the day, each of the moment, you know, to be able to successfully go through 2021. And it's a season, as you walk with him, as you ask him for this help, he will be releasing the grace, the help you need per the step you take. Because he said, 
he said, he said, two cannot work together except they be agreed. So for God to release the grace, you must be willing to work with him. So when we come in the place of seeking for grace for help, it means you are telling God, I agree with your terms and condition. I'm going to comply with your ways as you take me through each of the steps, mm. each of the journey. Mm. And as you comply with him, your 2021 is going to be great. Mm. It's going to be wonderful. And I believe that's why we are taking this, embarking on this fasting and prayer for the challenges that we cannot handle mm. to show God that we are helpless as human beings. We have our limitation, but with you, we can do all things. Amen. With you, we can go far. Amen. With you, we can see the end of 2021 successfully. Amen. Amen. You see, that is our, when we fast and pray, all we are doing, we are expressing our helplessness mm. before the Lord. So some are means to me, therefore, that something like prayerlessness can be an expression of pride and arrogance. Mm. The, it is like prayerlessness is like, I don't need you. Prayerlessness is like you are telling God, I don't need you, I'm okay, I can take care of myself. When you see people that are not, you say pray, you have to be begging them to pray. You have to uh, encourage them to pray. It's a form of pride. You are telling God, I don't need your help. That is what you are saying. But if you know how helpless we are, if there's any time people are helpless, it's this time. Amen. And I believe sometimes people are willing to pray, but there is no spiritual energy to power them into that place of prayer. And when we fast and pray, I think we come in a position where we are available for God to pour into us like a cup you know, to pour that grace and anointing to be able to do what naturally we cannot do spiritually. So if you are in that category whereby I really want to pray, I know I need the help of God, no doubt about it. I have admit, I admit my, 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 my limitation, but I don't feel I have the energy, the spiritual energy to pursue, to, to run, to kind of pray. I believe in this time of fasting and prayer, this is the time God can pour that grace into you to be able to stand in place. Say, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, you know? So when we come in the place of fasting and prayer, go renew your strength. God renew your spiritual energy and pour into you grace to be able to stand in place of prayer and fasting so that the plan he has for you can come to pass. Yeah, that is why when we are fasting, when we are praying, we are telling God we are helpless. And I can tell you, God's power is not for the strong. God's power is for the airplace. Number two, mm. number two, what are the things that happen? Why, what, why do we fast and pray? Number two. Expressing confidence in God's willingness to answer our prayers. Okay, we are, we are that one that we, when you fast and pray, yeah. we, are, we are trying to, we, we want to express our confidence in the fact that God answers prayers. prayers. And Psalm 65, verse 2, it says, um, I am the Lord that God, God says Psalm 65, verse 2 there. He talked about the fact that uh is the God of all flesh. That is Psalm, Psalm 65, 65, verse 2. Verse 2. It says there, 65, verse 2. He said, Oh, you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. It's so to you that hear prayer, to you all flesh will come because we are confident that He will answer our prayers. Amen. That is why we fast and pray because we know He has answered the previous one. He will answer us in this one. First John five fourteen. So this is the confidence we have that when we pray according to His will, He hears us. Amen. This is the confidence that we have that when we pray according to His will. He will hear us. If you know that he wants to hear you, if you know that God will hear your prayer, that will give you confidence mm -hmm. to come before him. In case you have prayed before, it did not go through. If you have prayed before, you didn't get answer. This time around, you are going to get answer. Amen. This time around, you are going to get answers. Amen. Answers will come to your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three reason why we fast and pray is to express our dependence on God. That is Second Chronicles chapter uh, chapter chapter twenty verse twelve. 
we want to express our confidence to our 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 dependence on God. We want to let God know that our eyes are on Him. Second mm-hmm. Chronicles 20, verse 12. He said, Our God, uh, our God will not judge them, for we have no power against this great mortal that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, for our eyes are on you. We are telling God that we are depending on you. That is why we are fasting mm-hmm. and we are praying. We are telling God our eyes are on you, will depend on you. If there's any time when we need that kind of thing, it's now. When vaccine came, people are rejoicing that, oh, praise the Lord, the vaccine will tackle this thing, then they said it's a new variant. I mean, you can imagine, it's like, as we are trying to solve the problem, another one is coming up again. So we need our eyes to be on the Lord. We are telling God our eyes are on you. We do not trust in our strength or chariot. We trust in you to help us to have victory in the year over this pandemic. That is, we are telling God that our eyes are on you in dealing with the challenges that is available right now. There are situations where people have lost their jobs. There's so much disruption this year. Many people have faced what they did not face before. Some have lost their jobs. Some have business have been affected. People never knew something like this was coming. But you know what? God knows it was coming. That's why we connect with God. Mm-hmm. When we come to us, our eyes are on you. Because he knows that our eyes are in the Bible and they look unto him and they were lightning, and they were not ashamed. God will see to it that you don't see shame this year. As you fast and pray, as you lift our eyes and look unto him, God will make sure you don't have shame. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And because God is a merciful God, anytime people humble themselves and seek his face, he's always merciful to turn to rescue to intervene look at the situation of esther and her people when they saw the challenges that was beyond their strength Haman was out to destroy them as a nation to destroy them as people and they gather and pray and seek god in fasting and prayer god intervened in a mysterious way it's a whole story, but we know God came through. And even these people, Jehoshaphat and his people, when they saw a battle beyond their strength, they turned to God. God came through for them. God will never leave you. Anytime you come before him, seeking him for genuinely from your heart, for mercy, for intervention, he will never let you down. And I believe as we embark on this, you know, fasting and prayer, seeking his face for the best way for us and our children and for the nation, I believe God will turn to us with mercy and intervene at different level of our challenges in Jesus' name. Amen. Just Amen. like what mommy is saying, this is just to bottle what she has said. You may not know the future. Mm. You may not know what the future holds for you. But we know that God holds the future in his hands. Amen. You may not know what the future holds for you, but we know that God holds the future in his hands. So this is what they said, as we fast and pray, our eyes are on you. Mm-hmm. And mommy mentioned something there, that when we are praying, we are fasting, all we are saying, we are seeking the right way for us, our children, our the year, that is Ezra chapter 8, 21. He said, they declare a fast in Adriva Ava, that they may seek a right way for us and our children. Mm-hmm. And that is, to let us know that part of the forces of fasting, what it does in that Ezra chapter eight, verse 21, to let you know when you fast, when you pray, Ezra chapter eight, 21, the book of Ezra chapter eight, Ezra eight, eight 21. 21, it says there, he said, then I proclaim a fast there at the river of Havah that we may 
that we may humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. Verse 22. Verse 22, for I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and housemen and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for all the all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. The next verse. Verse 23. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered he our prayers. He answered prayer. our prayers. Mm -hmm. That is when you come and fast, you are looking for a right way for you, for your children. So this fasting can affect your children, mm -hmm. affect all your possession. He said the right way for us. We humble ourselves. So when you fast, come to fast, you are humbling ourselves before God. And remember, humility draw grace. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, he give more grace to the humble. You can see there we're talking about grace, that when you come to the throne of grace to obtain help and find grace to help mm -hmm. in time of need. When you fast, you are praying, what you are doing, you are humbling yourself before God and humility draw the grace of God for the year. Mm -hmm. So you collect new grace for new year. The grace that will cancel disgrace. Mm -hmm. The grace that won't let you see disgrace in the year. Mm -hmm. You begin to draw on new grace. Mm -hmm. You are drawing on new force of grace into your life. Mm -hmm. If fasting means humbling yourself before God, it also means that fasting draws grace from God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we may humble ourselves before our God, not before men. So when you are fasting, you are humbling yourself before God. And when you humble yourself before God, that, that humility draw grace to cancel the disgrace in the year. God knows the disgrace and the challenges that the year will bring. So when you are fasting, you are praying, what you are doing, you are drawing grace because you are humbling yourself that will help you to overcome every form of disgrace in the year. Not only that, a right way for us, for our little ones, even our children, even our possession. He said, now that the other one, another word said, that right way for us means to seek the Lord for protection. Protection for us, for our little one and the possession, because they were going with money to go and build the temple. They don't want robbers, armed robbers, to waylay them on the way. Mm -hmm. So they needed the soldiers. They were trying to ask, they, they, were, they were saying they wanted a soldier, they were afraid. But now remember that they have told the king that the hand of God is always upon those that are seeking for good. Mm -hmm. We are not going to ask for soldiers again. Mm -hmm. Let's believe God that by this our fasting, it will protect us. Mm -hmm. What this journey of this year, me and you need protection from virus, mm -hmm. from infection. Mm -hmm. So when we seek the face of God, see what they said here. They said we have. He said we are, we are ashamed mm -hmm. to request of the king an escort of soldier and husband to help us against the enemy on the road. There are enemies on the road. There are enemies ahead in February, in March, in April. There are forces of the enemy ahead of you. For we are spoken to the king saying, the hand of God is always upon those for good that seek him mm -hmm. and the power and his rod is again that forsake him. So they do not ask for soldiers again. So it means as they fasted and pray, they, 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 they were escorted by God's presence and power. Mm -hmm. They didn't need the escort of soldiers, even though that terrain was very difficult. In this particular year, you need escort. Mm -hmm. You need the escort mm -hmm. of God's presence. Mm -hmm. You need the escort of angels. Mm -hmm. As we are entering oh, to this yeah. year, yeah. as you are fasting, yeah. the Lord will escort yeah. you. Yes. Begin yes. to pray yes. as you go on in this year, the Lord will escort you. Magada gato papa pa le kata kata. As we go this year.
fear. The angels of God will escort you. The angel of God will escort you away from infection, away from attacks, again vandalizers, again destroyers of destinies. Just he said the hand of God is upon them for good that seek him as you fast and pray. This year, the Lord will grant you escort, divine escort, angelic escort, against every form of things that lay in wait, every vandalizers. Pray right now that as you seek the Lord, the Lord will escort you. The Lord will escort you this year. He will escort us. He will escort us. The hand of God will be upon you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What are we saying there for? Another point, number four, is that when you pray and fast, you secure the hand of God. When you pray and fast, you secure the hand of God in the journey. This year is a journey. You will see verse 31. Because they prayed, verse 31. Verse 31. It says there, it says, then 31. we departed from the river of Ahava uh -huh. on the 12th day of the first month uh -huh. so go to, to go to Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And the hand of our God was upon us. Mm -hmm. And he delivered us from the hand of the enemy uh -huh. and from ambush along the road. Can you see when you fast and pray, you secure the hand of God to deliver you from all the evil of this year? You don't know what the year looks like, but we know the one in whose hand the year is. We don't know how the year will go, but we know the one that knows how the year will go. Because Isaiah, for this verse 10, it declares the end from the beginning. God does not start when the year starts. God starts the year when it has ended. For God, God knows how the year will be. As we start this year, the hand of God will come upon you. Begin to pray right now that you secure the hand of God. Pray wherever you are that the hand of God will be upon you. Wherever you are, begin to pray that the hand of God will be upon you in the name of Jesus. The the hand of God will be on your children. The hand of God will be on your substance. The hand of God will be upon you to deliver you and deliver you from everything that lay in wait. Pray right now where you are that the hand of God will come upon you to deliver you from the hand of the enemy this year. And everything that lay in wait, everything laying in wait for you, everything laying in wait for you. Magazo brakata. The hand of God will deliver you. Amalikaza. The hand of God will deliver you this year from infection. The hand of God will deliver us from this COVID-19 and its effect. The hand of God will deliver you from untimely death this year. In the name of Jesus, as we fast and pray, this year, Lord, I pray that the hand of God will come upon us to deliver us from every form of evil of this year. In the name of Jesus, that the hand of God will be upon us to deliver us from all the evil works of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, everything that lay in wait, everything that is laying in wait, every trap on your way this year, every ambushment, every trap, a palagada. A broke satire, every trap, a bolo bose boleboya, a yakata tata keseta, um baba baba lekete. Pray where you are, pray right now as you fast and pray. The Lord will deliver you from every trap this year. The Lord will deliver you from every embushment. Kerebo se de boleboya. 
Pray that the Lord will deliver us. The Lord will deliver you from every ambushment, everything that lay in wait this year. The Lord will deliver you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to let you know, just like when we entered this 2020, nobody knew virus was coming. Everything was going normal in January. People were traveling, going about their business. Nobody knew virus was coming, but God knew it was coming. For those that pray, the Lord delivered them from the ambushment. Mm. There are ambushments that are in the year. There are landmarks or bombs that the enemy has set for me and you. You don't know if God knows it. But when we go fast and pray, what God does, God goes ahead and begin to go. That's why I say we go ahead of you. God says, I will go before you to remove the things on your path that they have laid for you. Mm -hmm. I will go before you as a consuming fire mm -hmm. to clear off the way, to remove barriers mm -hmm. and obstacles that have been put in your way. Mm -hmm. I will remove it when you are busy fasting, when you are busy praying, mm -hmm. I am busy walking. Mm -hmm. When you go to work, you walk. When you pray, God goes to work. Mm -hmm. When you go to work, you walk. When you pray, God goes to work. Mm -hmm. God goes to work against everything that is working against you. Mm -hmm. That is what your fasting and prayer does. Mm -hmm. Number five thing that fasting and prayer will do, I read it from here, is this, to let you know, fasting and prayer has the power to enhance your faith and strength to deal with evil power and evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. it destroys satanic resistance. It empowers you to destroy the powers of evil spirits to break satanic resistance. Mm. That's why the Bible, there are very stubborn spirits. There are some, there are some stubborn spirits that require strong power and faith to deal with, mm. which you can only gain in fasting and prayer. I give you to disciples when he said this kind mm. in Matthew 17, 721, this kind goeth not out except by fasting and prayer. There are very stubborn problems stubborn devils that does not hear English. If you don't pray in fasting and prayer, so fasting and prayer, therefore, increase your authority. Fasting and prayer enhance your authority to deal with spiritual powers, to dismantle satanic forces. He said, Jesus told disciples that this one can only go fasting and prayer. So in dealing with some stubborn spirit or power, you need extra strength and faith. This is one of the influences and potency that fasting and prayer has, has, has to do in your life. It increased your level of authority. And we saw that in Daniel, uh, in Daniel chapter, chapter, chapter 10, we saw that the prince of Persia uh, came to, in the first month, in the first month when they were praying, it was in the first month, the prince of Persia, that is Daniel chapter 10 uh, from verse, uh, 10 from verse, uh, we saw Daniel chapter 10 from verse 10 to 12. Daniel 10 from verse, uh, 10 from verse, let's say from verse 12 to 13. Daniel 10 from verse 10 from verse 12 to 13. Daniel, Daniel 10, 10, 10, 10 12 okay. to 13. It says there was 12. He said, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. You can see, eh? what did I follow? Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. The angel that was carrying his prayers, that was carrying the answer to his prayer, was delayed. So Prince of Persia has prison too. I thought it's only error that has prison where they put Peter. So in the realm of this, we also have prison where they keep angel. You won't believe that certain force can keep some angel. So when they fasted and prayed, the fasting and prayer of Daniel activated angelic helps mm -hmm. 
to deliver the angel of blessing, the angel of answers. Now, let me say this to you. When you fast and pray, what you are doing, you are bringing about reinforcement for breakthrough. There's a warfare between demonic forces and angelic forces. So what we do is what determines who wins in our battle of life. What we do determines who wins. Your fasting and prayer empowers your angels. Mm -hmm. And we saw by fasting and praying, Daniel, his prayer was already answered from the first day. From the first day that you prayed, your words were heard from the first day. So, but they delayed the angel. So sometimes when you see a delay, there's work, there's work going on somewhere. When you see a delay over something, there are many things like that that God has already answered. But it's been delayed in the realm of the spirit, and you will think it is God. And God said, I've already released the answer. What is going on? So sometimes there's a lot of satanic resistance over many of us. We suffer that. We are the same challenge. The enemy can resist an agenda of God in your life. Daniel fasted. I want to let you know, from the first day, God answered the prayer. If Daniel has stopped praying, that angel will have been delayed till he will go back to heaven. Daniel continued to pray and fast. Those are his persistent, persistence in fasting and prayer that broke the resistance. So it means to me that spiritual persistence, persistence in fasting and prayer breaks satanic resistance. Persistence, persistence in fasting and prayer break satanic resistance. And I wish I had testimony in the, in the London service. Uh, we had a visa that was to be given to us when Nigeria, my family was about to be in England, but the enemy resisted it. Somebody just took our file and put it in a, carried it and put it in a drawer. For five months, they were looking for our file. And we began to pray. Five months. We did 21 day fast, myself, my wife, January 2007, in the year of release. January like this, year of release. We started fasting from January, from the beginning of the month. And we plan to do two, three things, to fast, to pray, and give our first fruit. And we began to pray on the 21st day of the fast. I said, Lord, you cannot pretend you don't see me fasting. You say, if you see when I fast, you will reward in the open. Lord, our papers must be released. Our visa will be released that day. That day. That day. God sent an angel to that, to that, to that embassy to trouble them there. Then the, the manager said, "Who is holding the file of Susu and So family?" And one of the staff came out and said, "I'm the one holding the file." They say, oh, "Why are you holding it?" Say, "I'm holding it because uh, I kept it on the file so that uh, I will say that when the event is over." For you to invite them, I'll say that the event is over. That's why we refuse the visa. I said, but why do you have to do that? Why do you do that? I said, I don't feel like doing it. They carry our, our file. They kept it away. On the 21st day of the fast, it was released. Mm -hmm. If that visa was not released, I will not be here before you today. There are many of us that the enemy want to block your blessing. Want to block and hinder and resist your destiny. If you don't fast and pray to move God into action, to dismantle satanic resistance on your part, the enemy will succeed in frustrating you. Mm -hmm. But in this fasting, wherever the enemy is holding that belong to you, mm -hmm. I see you release in Jesus' name. Amen. I see what belongs to you release in Jesus' name. Amen. I see you have breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. That you saw in the fasting of, of Daniel, Daniel prayer, uprooted and demolished spiritual barriers. Mm. So your, your fasting and prayer uproots and demolish spiritual barriers. Mm. That's what I want to know. Mm. So these are the things that happens when you fast and pray. And also, that's what happens when you pray, when you fast. Not worry about when you give. When you give, this time around, we are talking about first food fasting, first food giving, 
and forceful prayer. We are talking about fasting and prayer, I know, talking about giving. For your giving, Proverbs 3, verse 9, verse 2 to 10. Proverbs 3, chapter 9 to 10. Somebody here, the Lord will do the same thing for Amen. you. Whatever belongs to you and your family that the enemy is holding down, Amen. I see you being released in this 21 day fast in Jesus' name. Amen. We are starting this 21 day fast today. We'll put the the, the, the day on the platform. You join us from tonight, UK time, 12, p, 12 a.m. We start the prayer. As you join us, I see your breakthrough release. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Verse 9, they say, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your work will overflow with new wine with new wine understand that when you give god your first fruit first fruit is your first income in the year the first blessing that come to you now the law of first fruit that go the first fruit is that it is the first that bless the rest when you give god the first the bless the rest is blessed that's why you see that in the Bible days, when the, God will always ask for the firstborn. God will tell them, give me your firstborn. When you give God your firstborn, what you have done to God, God will bless the rest. Mm -hmm. It is the principle of giving God the first to bless the rest. Your first fruit is your first labor, your first blessing of the year. God say, honor the Lord with it. And when you do it, it says your barn will be filled with plenty and you will burst for with new wine. That's an anointing there. New wine, new wine. I want to let you know, if you give God your first fruit, you have connected to the power for breakthrough. Mm. That is what they did to come out of the hand of Pharaoh in Egypt. Mm. They gave God their first fruit. God told Moses, dedicate your firstborn to me and I will destroy the resistance of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. That is in Exodus chapter 13. Uh, Exodus chapter 13, I saw it here uh, that God was telling them to consecrate their firstborn to him. That is Exodus chapter 13 from verse, uh, from verse 11. Uh, maybe, okay, from verse 11 says there and it shall be when the lord bring you into the land of the canaanites as he swear to you and your fathers and give it to you that you shall set apart to the lord all that open the womb that he, that is every firstborn that comes from the animal which you have the males shall be the lords from verse 14 verse 14 so it shall be when your sons ask you in the time to come saying what is this that you shall say to him, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, mm. out of the house of bondage. Mm. Yeah, verse 15. Verse 15. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeemed. So when you give God your first fruit, you are moving God to break stubborn powers. Amen. It say it came to pass, Exodus 13 verse 15, when Pharaoh was stubborn to let us go, mm -hmm. there are certain things that are stubborn. Can you imagine? He said, this kind goeth not out, mm -hmm. except by fasting and prayer. Also, there are That's certain true. blessing that does not go without your first fruit. Mm. This kind goeth not out. Can you imagine you give God your prayer, you give God your fasting, you not give God your first fruit. Everything that is trying to undo you not to go. He said, God said, because he did not let you go. God said, I kill all the firstborn of the land to release your firstborn. God killed all the firstborn of Pharaoh because Israel gave him the firstborn. Mm. When you give God your first fruit, you have, you, have, you have registered with God that every Pharaoh holding what belonged to you down must be released. Mm. 
I see your first fruit bringing about your release in Jesus' name. Amen. And I think the first fruits stand for what is best. You know, God always look for the best. You know, so is the start, starting of your strength for the year. So giving it to Him, He will bless the remaining part of the year in your hand. And part of the thing we see the, um, you know, God bless the, the fruit of Abel. I think the first fruit he bring the quality ones yes, to the Lord. The best. So he brought the best, and I think there is something the unique first. about bringing your best to God. Bringing you know, first. it come like a sweet smelling savour to Him because He know this is your sweat. This is the best you this have. Is this is the first, you know, strike the of the year seed. for you. The first fruit, the first offering, the first whatsoever you have labor over at the beginning of the year, you are offering to Him that Lord, you are first in my life. And definitely, if you put God first, he will not put you last. Mm. You know, he become involved with your business. He, mm. he, he, he monitor your progress. He monitor everything about your movement. So he become partner with you in the mm. year. And mm. that's, it's very important. Putting the first thing in the hand of God, God secure the remaining for us. That's why he says here in Romans 11 verse, verse 16, he says, if the, if the first fruit is holy, the lump will be holy. Mm -hmm. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches are broken off, then you will be like a wild olive green. Now, when your first fruit is blessed, the remaining part of the year is blessed for you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you begin to give God your first fruit, you are provoking the blessing. Exodus chapter um, Ezekiel 44 verse 30. When you give God your first fruit, mm -hmm. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. Ezekiel 44, verse 30. 44, 30 says, um, he said, the best of all the first fruit of any kind. Mm. The woman told us, the best of all the first fruit of any kind and every sacrifice of any kind mm. from all sacrifices shall be the priest and shall be given to the priest the first of your grand meal to cause the blessing to rest upon your house. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. When you give your first fruit, you are provoking the blessing to come upon your house. Mm. You are provoking the blessing to come upon your children. Mm. You are provoking the blessing to come upon your home. It is the first that bless the rest. Mm -hmm. It's when you give God the first, your first fruit, it will provoke the blessing. And it's the blessing that make it rich and does not add sorrow. Amen. So when you give God your first fruit, sorrow must be out of your life this year. Amen. Sorrow must be out of your life this year. Amen. You'll be blessed going out. Amen. Be blessed coming in. Amen. Be blessed in your health. Amen. Be blessed in your home. Amen. Be blessed in your business. Amen. Be blessed in your career. Amen. You'll provoke the blessing Amen. for the year. And it is the blessing that make it rich. You are provoking the blessing to make you rich in that year. Amen. When you give God your first fruit, you provoke the blessing. And it is the blessing that casts the causes. Mm -hmm. And also, when you give God your first fruit, is a way to let God remember you. Mm -hmm. That is Nehemiah 13, verse 31. Nehemiah 13, verse 31. Nehemiah 13, 31. Nehemiah 13, the last verse. The Bible says, it said, and to bring the wood offering and the first fruit at the appointed time. Remember me, O God, for good. Nehemiah 13, 31. I mean, when you give God your first fruit, you know what you are doing? You are provoking God to remember you. When God remember Hannah, she gave back to her, to her Samuel. When God remember Noah, he rescued them in the day when there was a uh, flood. He remember him and preserve him. When God remember you, you can't die of COVID. Mm -hmm. When God remember you, you come out of your prison. Mm -hmm. The prison that the enemy may have put you, whatever power has held down your destiny, they will be released. Mm -hmm. I pray for somebody here, as you give your first food this year, the Lord will remember Amen. you. The Lord will remember you for good. Amen. Look at all the people God remembered in the Bible. God turned their story, including the man at the right hand of Jesus. That said, Master, today, 
remember me in your kingdom. Jesus said, what? Okay, I will remember you. And that man went to heaven. He's the first guy that got to heaven. Even before Abraham, from remembrance. Mm -hmm. Prayer or remembrance can change your life. Mm -hmm. As you give your first fruit, the Lord will remember you. Amen. When God will remember you, it will make people to remember you for good. Amen. You will not be forgotten. Amen. When God remember you, you will not be in your prison. Amen. When God, when the, when God remember Joseph in the prison, he reminded the butler mm. to remember him. And it was remembrance that brought Joseph out of the prison of life. Mm. And let me tell you, that was the only prayer Jesus was praying. He told butler, said, please, oh, when it is good for you, remember me, oh. That's the only prayer that Joseph prayed. Pray or remembrance. When you give your first fruit, you provoke God's remembrance. Mm. And when God remember you, impossible case become possible. When God remember you, according to Genesis chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3, the fountain of your problem will be stopped. Mm. And the fountain that was coming, gushing out, was restrained and the wind began to blow to read, to push back the wind. The spirit of God began to over on your life. The spirit of God began to walk in your life. Mm. Let us pray right now. If you are there right now, I pray the Lord will remember Amen. you. Uh, the Lord will remember you. As you fast, as you pray, Amen. as you give Amen. this year, the Lord that see in the secret, Amen. he will reward in the open. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you give your first fruit, Within that first fruit on the 31st, the last day of this fast, we'll be taking that first fruit. And it will be a part of that can be your one week ago, can be one month income, according to as the Lord has instructed you, as you obey and raise that altar, the Lord will turn your life around in Jesus' Amen. name. The blessing of the first fruit offering shall be seen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We are here today with my wife because of that. We did our first fruit fasting first fruit offering and first fruit prayer 2007 and that was what god looked at by mercy and bailed us out on the end of that principality that is in humanity there are certain people that are principality in their personalities there are principalities in their personalities that satan is trying to use them to stop you God will also move people to, to stop them. Just the way Satan moved people to hinder you, God also raised people to counter it. And that's what God did for us. They brought that visa for me that day, the last day of that fast. I collect the visa for myself and my entire family. Let me say something to you. If we didn't have that breakthrough, I will not be here today. If God gave me that breakthrough, since that time, we have been doing that every year. Mm -hmm. Every year. And we have been seeing diverse release. Mm -hmm. This year is another year of release. Mm -hmm. That was year of release, 2007, 2007. This is another year of release. There's someone listening to me today. There's your document, your passport, your visas, mm -hmm. your, your anything that's needed for your destiny to the next level. I see it being released today in Jesus' name. Amen. I see it being released today in Jesus' Amen. name. Wherever is needed for your destiny to move to the next level, yes. I see it being released in Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So if you are there, you are not born again, let's pray for you. You are saying, Pastor, I'm not born again. That's where the journey starts from. If you are not born again, you can you suffer again. Mm. That's where the journey to your first fruit starts from. Mm. So let's say, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you right, now. To you right Forgive now. Forgive me my sins. Me my Wash sins. me with your blood. With your Today, blood. Today, I receive you, I receive you as, my as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. Thank, you Thank you for saving my soul. Saving my soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Name Amen. Amen. Let's pray. I pray for everyone. That yes. watching us today, yes. that the power of God will break the hand of the wicked in Amen. your life. Satan's power will not prevail over Amen. you. Satan's resistance will not prevail. Amen. As you pray and fast in this 21 days, you will prevail. Amen. The God that see your fasting, the God that see your yes. prayer, the God that see your sacrifice, he will reward it in the open in Jesus' name. Amen. That shall be open reward of your blessing. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank everyone for joining us today.
uh, and my wife, as we have come with, uh, to minister to us. We're starting that fast night prayer uh, tomorrow. Join us. Uh, we'll be having um, uh, prayer lines if you want to join. Uh, we'll put it on Facebook. If you want to join, you can join uh, so that we we'll put it on any part of the world you are in, you can join that line. We put it there, we want to join 21 day prayer fasting going on. We want to be a part of that. You can join us around the world. And I believe quite that these 21 days, all your prince of Pasha shall be hosted. Amen. All your angel of blessing, the prison of Pasha, they shall be released by fire. Amen. All your blessing that have been imprisoned by the power of darkness, you shall be released. Amen. It is done Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank all of you, knowing fully where that we meet again tonight or tonight. Amen. So we are going to partake of the communion right now. The strength Amen. as we start the journey. Yes. This communion is the body of Jesus Amen. for strength, Amen. for health, yes. for long life. Amen. As you partake of this communion, you connect with the strength to fast, Amen. grace to lay down. Amen. Power to lay down your first for 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 free. Amen. It takes strength to lay down salary. Amen. For God to say, bring me your salary. You need to know what you are doing. It takes strength to handle what one week can come with all your bills waiting. I say, I will give God his own force. Like the woman, that woman of Sarafat, she gave her first fruit to Elijah. He said, this is the only food I have. Elijah said, give it to me first. He said, bring my own first. She gave Elijah first fruit. And that was the beginning of her breakthrough. Mm -hmm. But it took strength to do it. As you partake of this, I see that happen for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are sick, your sickness will be healed. I, I bless this communion. This is the blood and this is the flesh. Amen. I pray by this communion, the power of God begin to work in your life. Amen. It is done. Amen. Lord, we we'll pray for everybody yes. that your power will work in their life. Amen. Let your anointing work in their life. Amen. Let this year be their year. Amen. Let there be a harvest of answers to Amen. prayers. It is done. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight by 12. And I'll be here again next week from tomorrow, 8 p.m. Uh, UK time, and which is going to be 9 p.m. Nigerian time, and which is um, 3 p.m. Washington DC time. So join us uh, tomorrow for this wonderful, uh, we, our Facebook live continues. Uh, I'll be teaching you why we must pray in the beginning of this month. Why do we need to do fasting and prayer? I'll be teaching it. Why do we need to fast and pray? How to raise your own personal altar. And that will help you as we carry on on this journey. So join me tomorrow, 8 p.m. as we carry on on this journey of fasting and praying. The Lord will visit you. Amen. You have testimony. Amen. I thank everyone, all our Washington, D.C. members. all our, And I pray for the families, do that ask for prayer requests. I pray for your families. Yes, yes, the Lord will touch you. The Lord Amen. will bless your families. Amen. Lord, fulfill your desires. Amen. Whatever is going on in your family, the Lord will visit you. Amen. Anyone that is sick, be healed in Jesus' Amen. name. Every request that is put on this platform yes. is turned to answers. Amen. Every request on this platform is turned to answers. Amen. Lord, will pray for your people that everyone yes. on this platform to the Lord yes. will bless them. Amen. Many of you that join us today, the Lord will visit you. Amen. You will not finish this year empty handed. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I want to thank all of you. Please help me share this message. Share the share this uh uh this broadcast with somebody. Help us share it and help us um as it were. Don't only share it, uh, go to our Facebook page and share it there. Mm -hmm. We have Destiny Monday TV, our uh, YouTube videos. And so that when we upload new videos, you can get it. So please, I want you to go there and subscribe to our YouTube. Destiny Mandate TV is it. Destiny Mandate TV is it. That's all you need. And if you join it, 
you begin to hear messages as I'm preaching them. So go there and subscribe, Destiny Monday TV, and share this message with somebody. Like this page, join me on Facebook as you are watching, listening to me right now. Join the Facebook, be my friend on Facebook so that when I come live, you can get something. God bless you. I see you win this year. Amen. You must win this year. Amen. You are looking at me, I'm looking at you. You will smile this year. Amen. God bless you. Uh, see you again tomorrow by 8 p.m., but we are meeting on prayer line. God bless you. Love you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master, Jesus, is the one that has that master key.